Atlantic breakers, which are the glory of the Cornish coast, roll in today, poisoned and polluted. A tragedy such as Britain has never experienced before. Port Leven Harbour, at high tide, awash with a thick scum. The oil, feared for days, besmeared the westernmost tip of England. The southwest coast was a battle area. Civilians, 2,000 soldiers and Royal Marines grappled with this stupendous task of trying to fight off the oil. Under Secretary for the Navy, Maurice Foley, coordinated the efforts of the servicemen. Enormous quantities of detergents were brought to the area. A small defense indeed against an estimated 50,000 tons of crude oil already floating on the sea. But with the mass of mobile pumping machinery now assembled, it was the only remedy available on the shore. Cleansing operations at Senan Cove were typical of scores going on north and south of Land's End. Every tide left a thick covering of oil to which detergent was applied with all speed. The lovely beaches of Cornwall, the delight of holiday-making millions, would not be sacrificed without a struggle. By helicopter, routine watch was kept on the Torrey Canyon while there was still some prospect of salvaging the largest vessel ever to be shipwrecked. And every day, the Save the Beaches efforts were intensified. To men whose memories went back long enough, some minor incidents reminded them of wartime. Pathetic victims even at this stage were the seabirds. 40,000 already dead was the official estimate. More fortunate ones have fallen into human hands to be tenderly washed. It's a delicate job, but hundreds of people have spent hours cleaning them almost feather by feather. Firemen, many of them volunteers from other parts of the country, hurried to Cornwall's aid. At last, the Torrey Canyon lay in her death throes, her back broken, her fight against fate lost irretrievably. Less than two weeks ago, a fine ship of more than 60,000 tons now lay broken. And even in this state, perhaps with 50,000 tons of oil still on board, defiantly menacing the whole south coast of England, possibly even the coast of France. But now the decision was taken. The Torrey Canyon was to be bombed. For the seabird population, the disaster could not have happened at the worst time. Even the survivors will not properly recover for months, so this year they will not breathe, but at least they will live. On man-made wings, eight Navy Buccaneer jets were loaded, each with five 1,000-pound bombs. For the pilots, it would be not target practice, but bombing for defense to save part of the country from a new menace. For the beaches, hope would dawn again if the bombs could set fire to oil still in the tanker. Meanwhile, measures less spectacular were continued on shore. Michael's Mount off Marizion, may this summer be visited by very few unless the beach cleansing measures are successful. The awesome smoke pall from the bombed tanker 16 miles away, rising thousands of feet, almost resembling an atomic mushroom. How to prevent similar tragedies, nations will have to learn.